Alrighty, this week I went ahead and did a little Twitter poll thing, or asked for responses on Twitter and Blue Sky, and f <laughs> for suggestions. Right at the right in, until right at the end, I thought I was gonna not have a leader. I was there was such a wide spread of everything being suggested once, but right at the end, there's a few handful of people that all suggested ro roads yet yet traveled. So thank goodness for that. Whew. Although a shocking number of people suggested Echo and Password and Archer and Arches, and I'm like. Guys, I did full playthroughs of those games. Why are you suggesting those games? And then someone suggested a manga, and somebody else suggested a tabletop RPG. And I'm like, I don't know if we understand the prompt. That I, I, need to, I need to figure out a way to add all the caveats to explain what I mean in a tweet, which is hard because of character limit. So this week we're playing Roads Yet Traveled. In my return, I've been gone for a few weeks because I went off and finished my video essay and also went to Las Vegas Furcon. So I just didn't have time. We're, I'm sorry. Do you think you can change the world? No matter who you are, you can only do so much. You have so little time to make a difference. Even finding a road worth traveling can be hard. It can look winding, erratic, endless. Sometimes it makes more sense to never even start. They say taking the first step is the hardest part. I can't count how many first steps I've taken. Does that mean time travel? Reincarnation? Or just somebody who has a lot of ADHD hobbies. <laughs> There's a multitude of interpretations. But maybe these steps wouldn't be so hard if I slept last night. Walk a walk. I mean, come on. <laughs> I'm sorry, the tone changed. What kind of pompous ass professor assigns these kinds of questions before the first day of class? You got assignments before class? How'd they even do that? I've barely moved in, and this guy wants ten pages. Ugh. Well, I'll have to make it up to him later. Maybe I'll have time to scrape something together between classes. If I even make it to class, where the fuck am I? Oh. Mix of relatable and unrelatable in that, like... I was the guy who could actually write a ten-page essay the morning it was due, and that's how I got through a lot of uh, high school and college. Uh, I could just wing it, I could just, I, for some reason. A lot harder to do than now, like with the video essays. Uh, I think it's because I care more now, and the audience is like huge and so on, as opposed to just trying to like. It's like it's like it's like if you if you if you turn in a bad assignment to your teacher, it's like your little secret. Like no one else has to see how bullshit your your the thing you threw together was. But oftentimes the stuff my bullshitting was good enough. <laughs> But uh, I did, uh, my first impression of going to college was getting a parking ticket. So that was fun, uh, because I, I went to orientation, so it wasn't even like day one of college, it was the orientation, and uh, I was t told that I'd park in the parking garage, and I guess I parked in the wrong parking garage, so I got a ticket for being there without having the... Uh, it's like they, had de they designated one parking garage as being free parking for the uh, orientation, and I'm like, for, it was unfathomable to me that any place could have more than one parking garage. That's insane. So it has. So if I found the parking garage, that must be it, right? I did it. No. Nope. So I had to pay a ticket for my uh, on my first day at, at before my first day of college. So it's a bit like getting a an essay before you even attend class. I was already in. in, in I had already had more value extracted from me than I had extracted from college before it could even start. Very frustrating. Also, it's orientation. You're you're inviting a bunch of people onto your campus that don't know where they are, which is why they need to be oriented, and then you punish them for parking in the wrong places. Just seems a bit ass backwards. Where the fuck am I? Taking a look around, I realize I might have gone the wrong way. I pull out the brochure I got during orientation to check. Okay, well, buddy, you've been to orientation already. I feel like you should have... You had... You, this, you, that was your chance. 
looking at the well illustrated but poorly designed map of my new campus, I notice I've passed some <laughs> verdigris ridden statue. Hmm. I don't know that one. Let's not we'll do a learning moment. We'll do let's see. Open up my phone. Do do do. Looks like a German word. Which I did take German, but that doesn't mean I know it. A bright bluish green in, in crustacean or patina formed on copper or... Oh, it's like the oxidation shit. That's what that is. Well, I think statues should be plural. I don't know if it's supposed to be one of those founders or just some rich graduate who donated enough to be memorialized. I don't want to go check, though, as it's surrounded by freshmen right now. If I had to guess from here, I'd think it's just some graduate. Hmm. What do you think you're so good for? You think yourself to be a god? Immortalized in bronze? Look upon my works in despair, ye mighty. I swear I knew that quote at one point. Ugh, I can't do this right now. I'm late enough as it is. As is. I pick the least crowded walkway and amble forwards. Flipping further through the pamphlet, I see some fun activities I could attend later. There's a game night, a club fair, and a mixer of some kind. I can't wait to not go to any of those. Damn it, no, 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 I should go... I guess... I was fucking miserable at the last college, and it was probably for this reason. I really need to try this time. I'll see what I can do, and if I end up crawling back to my room, well... <sighs> Solitude sometimes is best society. That's later, though. I've got to stop. I've got to stop getting distracted. I have a class to be late to. Looking at one of the buildings, I see some signs and start following them. I swear any place this poorly laid out must really want its students to be late. And who wants- who puts dorms and cafeteria on the opposite sides of the campus? Not that I even had time for breakfast, but still. <sighs> what am I even doing here? This is what, the third? So far this person is characterized as being somebody who blames everybody else for their mistakes that they keep making in a predictable fashion. <laughs> like, oh damn, I don't know where- I, I'm gonna be late because I need to find my class still and it's already starting and I didn't, in all the time I had before this, in any way, just find them already? Like, during orientation, if you have your schedule, or whenever you first get your schedule, just go walk around and find where those classes are and then you know wake up early enough to actually have breakfast and or find your way places i'm just thinking about how my anxious ass is like i need to get to the airport two hours early at least because like what if i can't find parking and like what if i get lost in the terminal like i need to get there and it's like the moment i sit down at the terminal and i've made it the moment of relief of like oh god all the things that can go wrong are pretty much past me now uh I don't really care anymore that I might have 90 minutes of waiting to go. I'm like, whatever. I'm here. Nothing... I'm, I'm, all, the, all the problems are gone. This is what? The third? No. Fourth time I've managed to get into some random college. I feel less and less confident I'll stick around long enough to graduate. Hell, at this point I'm worried I won't last a semester after getting another job. And my... Well with my less-than-stellar work ethic. And how is a half-baked literature degree going to do me any good anyways? I knew I should have tried harder and, like, applied myself and... <sighs> Never mind. Now I just sound like Dad for thinking you should try at college. It is an interesting, like, paradoxical position to put yourself in. Like, if you don't care enough to do well at college, unless there's some other thing that's going to come up, uh, then why are you also going back so many times? I understand trying again, but a fourth time? This is an extremely niche life experience. I wonder if I... 
and we should have texted them. I forgot with how everything went these past few days. They dropped me off and I kind of just... Well... I'm sure they're home now. I'll just call them later. Okay, so they've had days to find where their classes are. <laughs> when they're just on a college campus. De facto not having much in the way of like assignments yet. Or things to do. So they're probably bored? Still, sometimes I wonder if I should just stop and... Ugh! In my senseless pondering and blind meandering, I accidentally bumped into a building that looks shockingly close to the one of the little drawings on my map. I do a double take just to make sure. VN protagonists are so good at doing this, but I always wonder, does anybody else just wander into solid objects because they're daydreaming? I feel like there's a lot of autopilot brain that takes care of you there. I've never made this mistake, and I loved walking around campus and daydreaming. That's what I spent most of my time doing. Not most of my- that was a weird exaggeration. Oh, uh, well... I guess I did end up finding the right building. Sure sticks out way more now that I've actually seen it. This is how we set up this character's ESP. They have act they actually have extrasensory powers where they, uh, if they unfocus, they will magically wander exactly where they need to go. Like some sort of, like, mystery man equivalent of the Room of Requirement. The building in question is the newest on campus, and despite looking ancient, it's apparently some huge science department. I'd heard it's been a big draw for the school, mainly for the labs or something, and the interior is supposed to be in stark contrast to the exterior. Something about finding inner meaning in all things, or whatever. I'm, of course, just here for one of the lecture halls. I guess even the lowly English majors are allowed in, if we stay in line. <laughs> I won't complain, though. The rest of the campus is a bit more run down than I'm used to anyways. I saw some buildings during orientation that didn't even have air conditioning. Uh, I'm dreading having classes in those. Okay, that's enough staring at the building. I should actually get inside before I'm too late. Although I find myself unable to move. I end up just standing off to the side, in the shade of some old trees. Am I really doing this? Dejectedly, I, I inspect my little map with its embarrassing mascot and colorful logos. Go Bulldogs! Or whatever. I feel out of place even though I've been through this many times. First day jitters, I guess. When you, when you think it would get better... And I'd feel less nervous. It doesn't. And it, it just feels more pointless. I wish I could just stop. Maybe find something I was good at and stick with it. I've been dragging this major around like a ball and chain for so long and it's gotten me nothing. Three failed attempts later and yet... What else do I have to crawl back to? My retail job? An empty bedroom in my hometown? Everyone I know has already moved away. Except me. I don't have a better answer. Nor do I have the drive or the capital to do anything else but keep whatever this is up. Guess I... Guess I best just get on with it. I'm not even going to last a day at this rate. Listen, you're va you don't have nothing to show for your English degree. You at least know the word, uh... For digress. For verdigra. For di I don't know how to pronounce this word. This is a problem. <laughs> There's, I don't know which, uh... Because our, our language is a nightmare, I don't know which language we took this one from, so I don't know which pronunciation to go with. Like, the game... There's a game called Greece that's spelled G-R-I-S. So then I'm like, is it verdigris? Or is it like Mardi Gras? Mardi Gras? <laughs> listen, listen, I majored in computer science and then quit because I hated it and also was doing terribly and then I switched to geology. So, I guess I was in this building. Ah, being a junior at 25 is so embarrassing. That is wild. That's seven years? At this rate, I won't graduate till I'm 30. Wait, do college students have distinct... 
years, like freshman to senior. They do in high school because it's literally just a year, but the the years are so unofficial and based on credits. I guess maybe it was credit counts. Maybe I just never paid attention to it because it doesn't matter. I huff and puff, but once my little tirade is over, I move along. I finally found the front doors and head up to the small staircase inside. I, I took 5.5 years to graduate. So I, I graduated when I was like 23 instead of 22. Whoops. Seems quiet. Maybe I missed the class rush. I ponder, hopefully, as I reach the hall doors. Turns out I was not so lucky. I open them to see a mess of people heading every which way. Too many people, in fact. Oh man, I didn't know this place even had this many students. Where were all of you at orientation? Uh, orientations for freshmen. There's all, there's so many more students, especially when we're going into the, the you and my problem of only uh, of taking more than the normal four years. So it's not even not even twenty five percent of people are, are freshmen or new. Way fewer because of how long people might, might be at college. That's not even getting into all the upperclassmen, like graduate students. I try to head inside, but almost get knocked over by someone barging through. Oh yeah, and the weird people that just show up and to lectures and watch, and then leave for free. They just do free college because they just look up the schedule and show up to classes on, in big lectures and no one cares as long as the they don't literally run out of space. Ugh. Hey! I look back, but they're already gone. You... Huh. Jackass. I don't know, man. You have a proven track record of just running into shit on your own, so I don't know if we can really blame other people in these scenarios now. The last class must have just gotten out. This sucks. I've never been good with crowds, even though I've been told I blend into them quite well. Not really sure that was a compliment in retrospect. Oh well. Getting a bit further into the building, I realize this may be a bit more than I had anticipated. Maybe I should try to find an empty hallway or just anywhere I can be alone for a second. Scouring the halls, I can feel my skin writhe as eyes are unintentionally drawn to me. And I know I'm not being stared at, but it feels like I'm being stared at. I see it. A perfect place to be off to the side and just take a breather. I managed to slip through the crowd and duck behind some awkwardly placed lockers at the end of one of the halls. How awkwardly placed are they? They're against the wall. That's the normal locker place. Sports. <laughs> Just sports. Phew. Salvation. In the form of a really weird nook? Is it going to be a secret door? Is that where we're going? Uh, not the weirdest place I've had a panic attack. At least I can be alone here for a second. I'm definitely starting to feel a bit jittery. You already had a panic attack, right? Three. Ooh. Okay, I think I was on the right path there. I feel like the door is gonna open. Mainly because I could, I just, ooh, it moved. I just could kind of like catch the hint of that, the, uh, the kind of contriving, getting the character to a really specific location. I'm like, I think that something's gonna happen there. I feel like I'm being trapped, watched, too. It's just a sense that, even more so than the character themselves, the narrative does not have any intention of getting this character to the classroom. Did it something get colder in here? Surely I'm just... This is wild. Are you sure, sir? Initiating sequence. Hello. Oh, it's like a collider? I thought those were bricks at first. Hello. Okay. Yep. Yep, they're in the thing now. Whoops. Okay, that's interesting. Um... Technically, there's been no acknowledgement so far that we're furry, so we might be human. 
and that looked like it might be a human in a furry rubber gimp suit, <laughs> but it's like being augmented into being a furry via evil science or something. Did, did the hallway change when I wasn't looking? I guess I must have been so distracted trying to get away from the crowd that I didn't notice I walked into the labs. Great, now I'm just lost again. You're taking this insane setting very well so far. Damn, I really should have had breakfast. I feel super lightheaded. Hopefully I'll have time after class to get something. Surely there's a cafe or something nearby. I start heading down the hallway, my little map still in hand. It's slightly weathered from me grasping it so hard. The poor little mascot drawing is all crumpled now. I probably shouldn't destroy this thing. Might be the only way I can get back to my old dorm. <laughs> I slip it into my pocket as I come to a corner. It's really quiet all of a sudden. I guess everyone is in class already. Everyone except me. I'm late to my first class. Can't say it's the first time either. I really need to get better at managing my time. Not a great way to make first impressions and all. Trying to get my bearings, I check out the nearest door. I know I'm looking for room 240L. And I know that this looks like gibberish. It looks like it's the QA room. <laughs> Quality assurance. I was going to say question and answers, but no. I'm no expert, but I don't even think this is a language. Okay, it's not that weird, man. It just looks like a Q and an A. I know that's not where it's going for, but it does look like language. Oh. You, you know, this is the science department. Maybe they have, like, full names for the classrooms or something and use symbols instead. Yeah, that's kind of cool, actually. They might never get into a science major. It's literature or bust for me. <laughs> uh, oh, man. It's bust, isn't it? I just stand lifelessly for a few seconds before shaking it off and reaching for the door handle. Only to realize there isn't one. Oh, wow, they really did go all out, huh? Uh, oh, I know. I pull up my student ID card and try touching it to the pad a few times. Nothing happens. I have the card reader to see if there's any way to swipe or insert my ID. I like that they know they're looking for 240L and they don't know what door this is. And they're just going to go in it. Because they still think it's just like some classrooms. They're just ready to just walk into some random classroom at random. Giving it a few inquis uh, inquisitory pokes in the process. Nothing. Huh. Uh... Well, no harm in knocking, I guess. I raise my hand, and before it even reaches, the door slides open. I'm a bit shocked, but also, damn, that was cool. They're furries. Are they going to notice that they're furries? Is it normal that they're furries? I hope the literature department is half as good as this. Upsettingly sterile and blocky. It looks like a perfect dark level. I peek inside and see some students standing around a table. All in huge white lab coats, looking very proper and clean. I don't think they heard the door open. Must be really busy doing science-y stuff. I gather the courage I need and speak up. Uh, hi there, guys. Uh, I'm a bit lost. Mind, me te mind telling me where room 240L is? First day and all. <laughs> well, first clue, buddy. Second floor. That's what that number means. But you're in for a shock. Arf? <laughs> Their ears prick up. Wait. What? Ears? Humans don't have ears. <laughs> As they turn to me, they are much larger than I thought they'd be. Also, they look like dogs. Does this school have a drama club? They must use this room for costumes or something. It does look like the room I used to play tabletop RPGs in. The, the giant 
science facility desks are big enough for uh, tabletop RPGs. They're great for that if you have access to like a an uninhabited room. And since we in the geology department had special keys for opening the building, we could just go there in the middle of the night and just have it to ourselves. It's great. Yeah, just really, really nice costumes. I've never heard of a furry before. <laughs> no furries exist in my universe. Just like when, how in zombie settings, no one knows what a zombie is. No one in my universe has heard of a fursuit. And so I'm just like, wow, ambiguous, strange costumes. I've never have, a, I don't have any point of reference for. And moving eyes, they're, those are called follow me eyes. What you do is you take the, <laughs> You recess the eye, and then it, and because of the the cave surrounding the eye, uh, it gives the impression that it's following you, which is the same trick they do with like those paintings uh, at Disneyland, I think. Probably, I don't remember. They're staring at me. I snap out of it. I don't like this anymore. I've been told this like people that have like big, tall, imposing fur suits uh, because of the follow me eyes, they have to like act more playful and move around more. Because if they stand still, it just looks like they're staring at people, and it like it looks upsetting. They look like they come across as more hostile. <laughs> it was like a cool gimmick people really liked, but more and more people are kind of like leaning away from them and being like, maybe I don't want this kind of eye, because it gives the impression you're looking at people you're not. I think I'm gonna go anywhere but here. <laughs> uh, um, bye. I duck around the door and start power walking the opposite direction. I hear what can only be described as barking behind me. My sneakers are thundering on the hard metal floor. Am I running? When did I start running? I'm not stopping now. The hallway is all the same. Did they always look the same? No, I'm sure they didn't. Where, where are the windows? Where are the bad motivational posters? I don't think I'm in the labs anymore. Rolling around the nearest corner, I bump into someone. Or rather, something. That's mean. It's clearly a person. They, they, they do science and everything. Don't call an intelligent creature something. I think I knocked them over. I gathered myself for a moment before looking down at them. If the phrase deer in the headlights ever meant something, anything to me, this is it. I think time has stopped. I might have skipped breakfast, and I might be a little lightheaded, but I'm not delusional. That is a daub in a lab coat, and a very fitted shirt, and pants. Our eyes meet, and I realize they're staring at me, returning my stunned expression. This can't be real. My heartbeat reminds me, reminds me time stops for no one, and I dash off in the other direction. From behind me, I hear a shaken, wait. It's enough to almost stop me in my tracks. Did that thing just talk to me? Did I understand it? No, no, no. Just keep running. The adrenaline in my veins is allowing me to sprint far more than I usually do. I feel like this music should have started when he stopped, when he first started running and not now. Morning jogs be damned, I'm running for my life. Maybe? Nope, red alert. As if things couldn't get worse, red lights paint every inch of the hallways and alarms blare overhead. I have a sinking feeling those are for me. If I wasn't panicking earlier, I am now. I don't really think this is the labs anymore. Hell, I don't know where I am. I turn a corner and see some more of those things looking around. I try to sneak a peek at them. They seem to be taking care of... They seem to be talking, but I can't hear them over the alarm. They have forgotten the lab coats and are wearing sleek outfits with uniform jacket. If the jacket wasn't enough to clue me into what their jobs might be, the weapons they're carrying sure do. One branching a whirring looking baton while the others have guns of some kind. My heart rate spikes. This can't be it. I can't be here. This, this can't be real. While I was panicking, I noticed one of the walls has a panel removed. Maybe for maintenance or something? 
It doesn't matter. And I don't care. I decided to make a dash for it. I hear some barking behind me. I think they heard me or saw me. It doesn't matter. There's enough room to where I can crawl through. Anything is better than this. I hear footsteps pounding behind me. They definitely saw me. I try to quickly duck into the opening, but a clawed hand... Paw? Reaches in and grabs at me. Come here! It grabs furiously before nicking my left arm with its claws. I wince. I think it got me. I think I scream. But in a haze, I can't tell. In its fury, it grabs one of my backpack straps, yanking me back a bit. Their grip is far too strong to break free from. I manage to wriggle out of my straps and get into the small tunnel before they can recover. I really hope they can't follow me in here. How are they, how are they not going to follow you? I don't dare turn back and check. They'll never follow me into this place clearly designed for someone to be in so that they can do all this maintaining and whatnot in those panels and things. I dodge under narrow pipes and around a corner into a barely lit and, cl and claustrophobic hallway. There's a lot of backgrounds. The hallway gives it too much credit. This is only an in intentional crack in the wall, but it's enough. I shimmy forward, hoping with every step I can find a way back from this madness. Out of the rabbit hole, or whatever. It's a literary reference, because of his English degree. It's a tight squeeze to get through the mess of pipes and cables parading as a hallway. I wince as I breach the other side, reaching to my arm only to find my shirt snagged in a pipe with a torn left sleeve. There's also some weird red oil on it. And on the pipes I pass. Oh no. I'm just being daft. I must have cut myself on the pipes. The guards definitely didn't have claws. And they definitely aren't giant dogs. Oh, that's what you mean. I was like, they definitely did have duck claws. What? No, they're, they're, they're pretending it didn't. Yeah, yeah, no, this is just fatigue. I'm just imagining it. I must have wandered off into some still un st underdevelopment part of the new building and gotten chased off by the guards. And now I'm in the walls, bleeding, trapped like a rat. Well... I'm not going back, that's for sure. It'd be embarrassing. Well, this moment's respite does allow me to clear my head. I, it does, it also clears some of the adrenaline from my, my system and the pain comes back. Psh, ow, damn it. I clasp my, my hand to my arm where the cuts are and press tight. I think you're supposed to do something like that. Close enough for now. As I do, I hear something akin to grumbling behind me. My eyes shoot open. Realizing I hadn't checked my surroundings before my little pause, I whip my head around to examine the rest of the hallway. After my eyes adjust to the darkness, I see something. I see someone. Sitting on some metal jutting out of the wall. It's hard to make out, and I decide to get closer. I shouldn't have. It does no good for my psyche to see what this is. It does no good for my psyche to see that this is. Huh. I think that's supposed to be what? Oh no. In fact, a dog in human clothes. Despite my panic, I take a second to look them over. I'm trying to convince myself they're fake. That it's just a suit. Anything. In my inspection, my eyes are quickly drawn to one of their arms. Either I'm seeing things, which feels possible at this point, or it's entirely made of metal. Watching their chest move up and down calmly and rhythmically as they sleep does, not, does nothing to assuage my pounding heart. A bl cool blue light emanates from their mysterious arm. My broken and terrified demeanor contrasting their calm and resting state. I hear more footsteps outside. I must be close to an exit of some kind. Maybe another one of those wall panels. I bet I can slip out. Although I don't see an exit anywhere. 
I see next to this canine, there's a bag of tools. Some that look immediately identifiable and some more, let's say, alien in nature. Well, I've never been into construction or engineering or whatever. They're probably just normal tools, right? I reach for the most analogous thing to a wrench and try to s silently sneak it out of the bag. Spread out! It couldn't have gotten far. My nerves of steel give out the second I hear that from behind me, and I panic. Knocking the whole damn bag over before scrambling to pick up what I was reaching for. I finally managed to get, get it out from the jumbled mess of unknown tools, but it's too late. Sir, so you, so you need to zip up your pants. You're having, you're having a malfunction. Look up from, looking up from my fumbling, I met with the confused and wide-eyed stare from the creature that was resting not but moments ago. A few slow blinks are exchanged, but both party, by both parties before it mutters, uh, "Am, am I still sleeping?" Well, I've heard these things speak before. Actually, seeing it up close makes me jump back. Wrench raised in a pathetic attempt to look intimidating. While still dazed, the canine in front of me realizes this and jolts back. Albeit a bit too fast and dings their head on a pipe. Ah! They yipe in a less than intimidating manner. What is intimidating, though, is that of reflex or intention, they decide to stand up. Dwarfing me by over a foot. Ears not included. In the process, they incidentally get closer to me than I'd like. Back up! I shout as I aimlessly swing their wrench at them like some cornered beast. If they weren't awake already, they are now. Uh, hey, whoa, be careful. What are you? Stay back. I'm warning you. Their eyes display no understanding. What are you saying? What do you mean, what am I saying? How am I the crazy one here? I take a few steps back. I'm cornered whether I know it or not. They take a step forward. Can't you hear me? I said stay back. With one last pathetic swing, I'm thrown off balance. And I slip backwards towards the wall. The canines, open, uh, canines eyes open wide. Not in fear, but in panic. N no. Uh, wait. Those panels aren't done being installed. Their words do not stop my descent as I slam into the thin wall, taking it down with me. Ah! Oh. Ah! Uh, my head is spinning. The blaring lights and alarms are not helping at all. I must have knocked out whatever panel they were working on. It takes a second to come to my senses. I drop the damned wrench and manage to stand up. I feel like shit. I look up and notice the dog standing in the opening, looking at me, almost... worried? I don't take time to dwell on it, as I turn to look both ways down the hallway. One end seems to have a few dogs in lab coats pr uh, frantically looking this way and yelling. The other way seems clear enough. I decide to make a break for it. I'm definitely not running as fast as I was, but running at all is a miracle right now. Then something turns the corner. One of those security looking dogs. They look unarmed, but through the haze in my eyes and the red lights, I swear I see their face illuminated in a sickly blue. There you are. Oh no. I try pivoting the other direction. Maybe I'll be better off passing those other dogs. I use all the energy left in my exhausted body to try and cover any ground at all. I hear my footsteps. I hear my heartbeat. Then I hear something that makes my heart skip a beat. Their footsteps. They're close already. I can't get away. I see the tool I dropped earlier and manage to snatch it up before they're, before they're upon me. 
Maybe I can defend myself or something. I turn and my heart stops. Oh, you're fucked. <laughs> you're completely fucked. Bounding towards me just a few feet away is another Doberman. Far more intimidating than the last. I don't even have time to breathe. I just flinch before I'm knocked to the floor. Wait, no, I... Kazap? <sighs> what? I open my eyes and look around. My head is in a total daze. I'm in... Class? Oh, thank goodness. I must have just made it to class and passed out. Those crowds really got to me sometimes. I breathe a sigh of relief. I go to scratch my arm and wince. Ow, what? Pulling my hand away, I see there's blood on it. Oh no. Maybe I still got cut in all of that. I did almost get knocked over before climbing into class. Surely there's a reason for all... I realize I've been sitting alone this whole time. And this isn't the lecture hall. It isn't even my school. No. Please. Panic doesn't have time to set in. They spot me in a heartbeat. Piercing blue eyes shoot through my very being. This is it. This is how I die. He lunges. I scream. Oh, that was a dream. Okay, I was like, hang on a minute. <laughs> why is he... If you're already a prisoner, why are they attacking? Startled awake from my horrible dream. To be confronted with a horrible reality. A horrible reality with a blanket covering me? This is definitely not my dorm. Hello? Where am I? Taking a quick look around the room, it seems to have some general furnishings, like a desk and a chair, a bench coming out of one of the hall walls, and a little nook that appears to be a bathroom. This might actually be nicer than my dorm. Wait. I can't be having thoughts like that now. Shaking myself awake, I try to sit up, only to realize just how damn sore I am. It's hard to even shimmy to the side of the bed. And to add to it all, I'm shirtless all of a sudden? Giving myself a quick once-over, I find that my pants are still on, although my pockets have been emptied. And in lieu of a shirt, I have some bandages on my arm and my head. I manage to stop myself from touching them like an idiot. Better just leave them how they are for now. Not that I'd wear shoes to bed, but I realize that, that those have gone missing as well. An uneasy panic sets in. Where in the world am I? Hello? I repeat louder. I manage to swing my legs over the edge of the bed. The cold floor causes me to shiver. After managing to stand up, finally, albeit with some wobbling around and catching myself, I realize that this room is missing something. Something crucial, in fact. There's no damn door! It's probably where that, it's probably where that line is on the floor. Walking along the edge of the room, I scoured, scouring it for any kind of crack or seam or anything, I realize that there's nothing. I bang my fist against the wall. Hello? Still no response. Discouraged, I sit on the edge of my bed and just try to put my thoughts together. None of this makes sense. How did I get here? Where even is here? Why are there giant dog folk just out and about? I'm really hoping the giant dog part was just a hallucination or something. Unfortunately, I'm having a hard time convincing myself of that. I have to calm down, even just a bit, just focused on my breathing. I think some therapist recommended that. It's been so long since I've been to one. It feels like hours pass, although it's probably been far less. I find myself jumping at every little inexplicable sound. There must be something behind these walls. I can feel it. That feeling of being watched. But I don't see any cameras. I remember seeing a sink in the corner and decided to splash some water on my face. 
Maybe get a bit of a drink while I'm there. I've done nothing but sit and try not to be complete to completely break down. I need some water. The sink seems fine. It runs cold enough. Speaking of, this whole place is a bit on the colder side. Maybe it's just because I've been relieved of my shirt, but still. Cupping my hands, I'm able to get a decent drink. It doesn't taste like anything, which means it's water. Probably. Looking at my hands after, I see some nicks and bruises. And a bit of blood still stuck under my fingernails. I've... I've been better. Fortunately, before my train of thought gets, can get darker, I hear some muffled sounds coming from the other, another wall. It sounds like... talking? I try to figure out where it's coming from before sitting my eyes on the wall opposite my bed. Creeping over, I manage to hear that it's definitely talking, but I can't make it all out. What do you... hurt them? You... well, some... Uh, sir? What? They stop for a few seconds. Sounds like there are two. Maybe three of them out there? I put my ear up to the wall to listen. What is it doing? Can they see me? I look around for cameras, but nothing in the room or on the wall sticks out as one to me. There's a sound like a mechanical door opening outside, and I can hear a new voice into the room. Uh, sorry I'm late, sir. I, I, I've never had to come down here before. I thought you knew the entire station. Never mind that. Merrick, can you let us in now? Station? Am I in a military base or something? Guess I'd explain the lab coats and armed guards. Is this an is this a alien station where the aliens are 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 uh, observing humanity? Like uh, Star Trek, essentially, like uh, the Prime direct Directive type thing. They have to all, they have to keep it hidden and, and be secret. Look, it kind of sounds like they don't expect me to be intelligent enough to use the sink or something, or, or do anything. It, it seems like they're currently basically watching me from the other side of one-way glass that I can't see, and they don't think that I can he understand them, so they don't, they don't care that I can hear them. I hear some clicking coming from the other side of the wall, as well as some muffled grumbling, before suddenly... The wall isn't a wall at all, but a window. I scrambled back, tripping over myself in the process and land right on my backside. Looking up, I met with three dogs staring back at me, all with varying expressions. I'm in the middle, in the middle and directly ahead of me, there's a shorter and older dog, wearing a smart looking lab coat and tie combo. Um... I don't know if I can call it a lab coat. <laughs> Their expression is a one of pure awe. As if they just discovered something amazing. And maybe they have. To his right is a massive Saint Bernard looking dog dressed in what I can only assume are some form of doctor's scrubs. He casually towers over the rest of them. I'd I'd be intimidated by his sheer size if he didn't have the most disarming grin on his face. We lock eyes for a moment, and his smile only gets larger. The last dog in the room gives me no such favors. As I turn to my right to face him, I realize who it is. My eyes narrow, and my heart rate picks up. Him. I scramble back to my bed and shield myself with a pillow. He just rolls his eyes and scoffs. Ugh, look at that. You and your team have terrified the poor thing. We'd be lucky if we can manage any kind of communication with it now. Yeah, that's great. Just doing my job. Hey, so can I go now, Chief? I gotta make sure there's no more of... He gestures at me. These things around. Finally having a chance to listen to this canine's voice, it has an interesting sound to it. It's not all just barks, I guess. It's gruff, but not intimidating. Right now, at least. 
He sounds like he's been trained how to speak properly, like in the military or something. Maybe not how to act properly, though. Knowing how, knowing now I'm not crazy and these things do indeed talk, I turn to the other two to see who this chief is. Now, now, Merrick, your team is scouring the whole station. And I'm sure they'll do an excellent job terrifying anything else they find. So just stay a while and make sure we don't have any issues here, would you? The chief's voice definitely clues me into his age. In the gray, if the gray in the, his fur wasn't an indicator enough already. Mark just grumbles and sits on a bench on the other side of the window. Well, I'm glad our medical team clothed the thing. I do think it would be more advantageous to actually see what it looks like in its natural state. What are you talking about, sir? I think the team just bandaged it up or something. They didn't put those pants on it. Wait. You're implying you found it clothed running around the ship? Yeah. There wasn't some naked creature running around the vents scaring our crew. Didn't you read my report? Merrick, you of all people should know how important yesterday was for me and... As I watch these two bicker at each other, my eyes are drawn to the massive unmoving saint in the corner of the room. There's something very funny about just calling him a saint. He hasn't made a move since I first saw him. Still just staring and smiling. It's a bit more unsettling now that it's been going on for so long. Finally, he speaks up. Chief, uh, I can summarize Chief, uh, Security Chief Saris's report for you. Still not breaking any eye contact. Uh, an alarm went off in the advanced research sector after multiple reports of an unknown being roaming the halls. After fighting the creature in the events, it was subdued by Merrick himself. The creature sustained what we believed to be minor wounds and was detained. It showed an aptitude for tool usage, evasion of capture, and logical thinking. Also, it's watching us. He punctuates his, he punctuates his speech with a warm smile and points to me as the other two look on. I can't help but look back at them. Okay, so this guy's losing his shit a bit and he's so infatuated because... Uh, they're so they're in a they're alien species. They're traveling space probably, and exploring, and like he is losing it right now because we're an intelligent species and they're not expecting that. Which is why the other guy doesn't expect pants, and this guy is very excited that we're looking at them and actually intelligently observing. They seem to be shocked that I'm at least following the flow of the conversation. Oh, my, you seem to be right. The chief pats the, mount the mountain of a saint on the back and walks closer to the glass. I wonder if this is the result of my... Hmm. No. It's entirely possible, sir, but there's no way to tell right now. Not until we've run all the data fully. And even then, who knows what it will tell us. Y yes of course. Well, let's not worry about that right now. Uh, Merrick, in your report, you did say it could speak, no? Hmm. <laughs> well, it did more screaming than speaking. But, well... Well, what? Sir, what Merrick is trying to say is that Head of Maintenance, Director Tyrion, corroborated that it does indeed seem to speak some sort of language. Although we do not know what. I guess Director Tyrion was the dog I encountered in the walls yesterday. Ah, uh, yes, I did see him being questioned yesterday. Interesting mechanic, that one, but hard to find sometimes. We'll bring him down here. Maybe he can help us. I... I don't know if that's necessary, sir. I mean... He only saw the thing for a moment that I should be capitalized. No need to bother him, right? Nonsense, nonsense. I'm sure he'll be of great help. Schedule him to come by sometime, will you? No one moves. Then the saint just nods his head and then 
turns back to me. Okay, so it seems that there's a some kind of uh, universal translator that's on the ship, and that that would be the explanation for why they can under I can understand them, but they can't understand me because I'm not like in the system. They don't know it doesn't know my language, but it's already translating to me, and they don't understand that I can literally understand everything they're saying. No one moves. Then the saint just nods his head and turns back to me. Maybe there are more dogs off to the side taking notes. Ugh. But that's later. Let's enjoy this moment. I mean, look at look at what we have here. Just fascinating. I would love to hear it communicate. I truly can't believe we might be making first contact here. Okay, yep, that's exactly what's happening. First contact? Oh no. Am I the first other sentient being the species has met? Oh, I am not making a good first impression. Well, I guess they aren't really either. Putting me in the cell and all. Either way, I decide it's probably time to come out from under my pillow and say something. Uh, hello? All their eyes widen, even Merrick's, as they stare at me. Why is it in quotes? You know their name. I try to stand brave and strong looking, crawling out from behind the pillow. But being even shorter than the chief, I don't know it's working. They turn to one another and I look a bit confused. Can you understand me? I ask with a small wave. Still nothing but beguiled looks. I don't remember taking lessons in barking and growling, so why the hell can I understand them? I guess I should just count my blessings that I can for now and worry about that about the, about the why later. They do seem a bit dis disappointed, although I'm not sure what they expected. It's common enough for a lot of visual novels to have some noticeable inspiration from Echo and Ad Astra, and here I'm picking up on like, oh, it's the element where, uh, because Marco was keeping it a secret that he was intelligent, uh, every he could understand what everyone was saying, but they didn't know that he could understand what they were saying. Any ideas, sir? Wh what? Oh, just thinking. Give me a minute. It just spoke up now, yes? Yes, sir. Did you hear it? Yes, yes, it, it, I, I did, but that's not what I meant. I mean it spoke up only after I said how much I'd love to hear it speak, no? Maybe it was just a coincidence, but I should try some simple questions and... He's cut off by a beeping noise. Raising his wrist, it's revealed he's wearing a bracelet of some kind. It seems fairly innocuous until a small screen appears in front of it. It'd be... Uh, it'd be up the... It'd be up there for one of the coolest things I've ever seen if I wasn't scared for my life right now. Oh my. Some numbers are coming through from the... Uh, well, you know. I know how monumental this is, gesturing at me, but this is my life's work. He's a politician. I must go, you understand? Uh, of course, sir. Uh, Merrick and I can handle this. Wait. What do you mean, Merrick and... Thank you. Uh, I Thank you. I expect a full report when you're done. Of course, sir. The big saint says with a smile as I and a nod as the chief leaves according to one last uh, affording me la one last look I'm falling apart a little bit whoops fascinating isn't it I can't see the door as he leaves but I can hear it there's a moment of silence between the three of us as if all the life in the room just left fortunately for all of us the one named Merrick ends our discomfort He's not going to read that report, you know. Oh, he reads my reports. Just not yours. Punctuated with a wink. Pfft. Whatever. Guess these two are acquainted. I still have no idea who they really are, besides some honorifics in their names. Well, one of their names, anyway. The large saint approaches the wall. Well, 
One of us has to get some work done around here. Mind letting me in? Aren't you worried about being contaminated? I spent like four marks getting tested by the emergency team. The saint just turns to him and raises an eyebrow. What are you? Oh. Damn it. Right, I forget sometimes. That's the point, you know. Yeah, well, it works. Anyway, you know where to stand. Try not to let it out. <laughs> That's the point, you know? I forget. Wait, does he forget? Is Merrick supposed to forget stuff? Or are they talking about, like, a containment item? When the saint... Uh, when the saint... Uh, while the saint waits, Merrick pulls out a screen from his bracelet. And... And part of the wall opens up. It just slid away. Yep, that's what the, th the marking on the floor was. The irony of pu of putting so much effort into making the walls opening seamless that you then have to mark them on the ground <laughs> is very funny. Once the, the wonder of the sliding wall fades, I realize I'm about to make contact with another one of these massive canines. My muscles tense up, and I go into f fight or flight mode. The expression on the saint changes, if only very slightly. There's no way he noticed that, right? I barely flinched, but still. Guess I gotta be careful. He steps inside and the door closes behind him. Though he proceeds to sit down on the nearby bench and mess around with his bag. I decide to keep my distance, so I sit on my bed and watch only slightly hiding behind a pillow this time. He's very calm for someone who is sitting in a room with an alien. Wait. I guess I'm also sitting in a room with an alien, though I'm decidedly less calm. Still calmer than when I woke up, though. I guess it can't be helped. The new dog might be huge, but he's very disarming. A gentle giant, I hope. While he's pulling out some by the looks of it, medical equipment, and other unknown tools, Merrick decides to get up from his bench and saunters over to the wall. I question the choice of interrupting the text population uh, at non-periods, because it just make, throws off what the sentence is like, shaped like and what its structure is. It scans weird. You know, Doc, that thing is pretty wily. I'd be careful if I were you. Oh. I'm in so much danger. I need the big and strong security chief to come and save me. Yeah, 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 but I'm serious. The thing took a rent that thing took up a wrench and tried to hit me. I know. I read your report. Director Tehran's too. Fascinating, isn't it? Ugh. More annoying. I'm already under pressure as it is. This really isn't helping. You're fine, Merrick. You've been through worse than this. Mm, yeah, yeah, whatever. Why the hell are you in there anyways? I doubt it's gonna sit all nice gonna sit all nicely for you. Why not just knock it out and run your test then? Knock it out? I'd rather be knocked out again I'd rather not be knocked out again, or at all, please. Merrick, you can't be serious. I'm already mad enough at the emergency team for suggesting the use of anesthetics on him. Let's not make it any worse, alright? Hmm, <laughs> fine. Just watch out, okay? I'll be right here if you need me. On one hand, no, they should not be using anesthetics because they might cause an allergic reaction or kill you. Like, you can't just use different things cross species necessarily, or even necessarily with the same species sometimes. Like, people die from complications of surgery just from being allergic to the to what puts them under but uh he shouldn't be in this room with me because there's all sorts of diseases and, and things we might have that could spread to each other in both directions we could be a, a danger to each other in the same room without inoculation the saint just grunts in acknowledgement he takes his time double checking every little tool he pulled out of his bag before turning to me our eyes meet and he smiles he then proceeds to pat the seat next to him. 
He can't be serious. Merrick picks up on this too. Doc, he ain't a normal patient. I don't think he's gonna just come to you. Well, I can't go to them without scaring them. But I need these tests done. We didn't get readings while they were asleep. They might not understand us, but it's clearly sentient, just scared. They will come to me. Just give them time. Merrick doesn't look convinced. I'm not sure I'm convinced either. After being chased down the corridors and slashed by claws, it's a bit hard for me to just approach one of these things. But now they see me, I'm sentient, so surely that won't happen again, right? Now oh, this sucks. My mind is racing every which way. After about a minute of panicking and guessing, and second guessing myself, I stand up and slowly head over to the bench. I guess my better judgment. Eyeing up both of the big dogs on the way. Making sure they don't pounce on me like last time. Merrick seems surprised I move at all. But Doc just has the same smiling exterior. I really hope I didn't make a mistake here. Not that I have much of a choice in this situation. It's either, what, go over to him or make a pillow fort and hide forever? Tempting, but I don't think I have enough pillows. I think the alternative is getting uh, restrained. I sit down a few feet away from him, almost falling off the edge of the bench, and slowly turn my gaze to him. He's even bigger up close. He must be almost eight feet tall. How is this going to work? Getting a physical from another species that doesn't even understand me or what I am? Doc slowly lower offers his hand. Paw? <laughs> Every fegal visual novel has to distinct has to distinct between uh draw the distinction between a hand and a paw. It always happens every time. For me. Resting palm side up. My gaze rapidly shifts between his massive paw and his face. Is he offering it to me, or does he just want my hand in return? Ugh. Poor thing's terrified. It makes me want to do a compilation of all the paw moments, but I'm, I don't have the patience and, or time to search through what must be like 40 hours of Let's Tries at this point. The chief was right. It'd be a miracle if we can get its trust. Hey, don't blame me. I was just doing my job. Don't remind me. After taking a few deep breaths to seal my nerves, I decide to just get this over with. I've always hated waiting at the doctor's office anyways. I slowly reach up and put my hand in his paw. Unfortunately for me, he was still busy bickering what Merrick and I ended up... He was still busy bickering with Merrick, and I ended up surprising him, and he jumped back a bit, causing me to flinch backwards as well. I immediately pull my arms into a defensive position. Oh, no, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. A crack appears in his ever-present smile as he seems genuinely worried. Oh, his expression's changed a lot since then. The sprite has. Putting his paw back out shortly. Slowly, much slower, much lower this time. Oh, no, 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 please don't tell me I've ruined my one chance. <laughs> This poor guy. Although our character's almost acting too cautious, like... He understands the situation well enough that... He, he could just get through this stuff. Like, he, like he's acting like he, he's in danger. Uh... But he has like a... He, he, he's, he, has, he has a social cheat. He knows... What they're intending. Because they... He, he's getting unfiltered honesty from them because they don't know he can understand them. Uh, so he should know that he's not really distinctly in danger. So it's it's a sort of a like obviously it's not entirely fair to judge because you've been kidnapped. So reacting re uh, rationally is not necessarily what to expect. And also, frankly, this character doesn't re necessarily react rationally to most things, even before he was kidnapped from the characterization we got. So it kind of makes sense. But uh, it does feel a little bit like. He's reacting to, uh, like he's reacting to this scene like he doesn't understand them. 
My palms are sweaty as I knead my bald, my bald fists, staring down this massive beast's paw, believing that they are, they are just in fact here to help me is substantially harder than I'd like. After convincing myself that I'm not crazy, and this is somehow the best course of action, I oh so slowly return my hand to his paw. I can't help but gently squeeze one of his fingers. It's warm, unbelievably soft. They really are just like big dogs. If there was any doubt left in my mind about these things, it's gone now. They are real. He lets out a sigh of relief, as if he'd been holding back since he walked in here. See, Merrick? Maybe you should just try being nice sometimes before just tackling everything you see. Hey, first off, I'm great at tackling things. Top of my class. And next time I find an intruder of the, of the station, I'll remember to be nice first. I'm sure they'll appreciate that. Did he just make a joke? I can't help but scoff. I'm surprised he has a sense of humor. Guess I don't really know the guy very well. Besides his tackling prowess, which I can unfortunately attest to. Noticing that Doc has an inquisitive look on his face, I realize I responded to another comment I had no right understanding. Did he really pick up on that, though? He does seem smart. But still, that's a stretch. He has me up a bit before reaching over with his sh other arm and, and pulling out some bracelet-looking thing. Oh. Probably to check my, bro my blood pressure. Wait, what good is that thing gonna do? He has no idea what my blood pressure is supposed to be. Maybe to get a baseline? I hope he doesn't expect me to tell him what a normal blood pressure should be. He pulls his paw back and pantomimes putting the device on his wrist. Seems eerily similar to how I it'd go at a normal checkup, but I won't complain. I'm going to put this on you and make sure you're healthy, all right? It'll squeeze, okay? Doc, what are you doing? Even if you can't understand us, it's important to explain the procedure. I can only act it out so well. Also, I'm recording this for posterity. Anyways, its heart rate seems to have gone down, so that's good. Probably. Who knew xenobiology would be so hard? <laughs> well... Maybe it'll be calm enough to get some blood samples. Wait, my heart rate? How the hell can he tell that? He hasn't even put the wrist strap on yet. He can tell from his touch. He's a bio doc. Maybe he's an android, actually. He might be an android that he's just got mechanical hands or enhanced hands or something. I was trying to parse the part about because of all the things that are confusing, this is one of the ones where we, we, we don't know yet. Uh, we don't know why the Doberman was like, oh, right, I forget. That, so maybe the doc's cybernetic, so he can't get sick. Is this just a canine thing? I know there are dogs that can do something like that. It's impressive, albeit a little bit creepy. And wait... Did you say blood samples? Alright. Anyways, I'm going to put this on your wrist. You'll feel a bit of a squeeze, okay? He's repeating himself, as if talking to a child, as well as acting it out again. Maybe instead of a syringe, the, the bracelet pulls out blood? Like the reverse version of those, like, injection things that could seemingly just, just shoot medicine into people and and stuff. Is that just, that's just science fiction, right? I don't remember. I don't know. I don't, I don't have a medication-heavy life. I suppose that, that... I suppose that's all he thinks he can do to communicate, so I just nod in response. His eyes open wide and he hikes up an eyebrow. Can you really not understand me? I ask, laying out my arm for him. Note for recording, that was the patient. At time of recording, I'll assume that was an affirmative of some kind, as it has allowed me to take its blood pressure. Yeah, I'll take that as a no. I wonder if I'm better off with charades. I hate how that might actually be a good idea. 
Maybe later. I just want to get this impromptu appointment over with. After a short procedure, the wristband comes off. Patient calmly allowed me to take their blood pressure. We'll assume this will be a baseline for future tests. If slightly elevated, perhaps. This would be a really bad way to find out I have blood, a high blood pressure. Although I suppose with no other humans around, I wouldn't be able to tell anyways. I try to laugh it off. While I'm in my own head, Doc pulls out a stethoscope that looks eerily similar to the one you'd find on Earth and turns back to me. Well, now attempt to listen to and record the patient's heartbeat as best I can. I thought the stethoscope was going to be something that takes your blood because I was just ready for like each of the... Uh, like what if each of the devices does a different thing than you expect? Like inverted? If I can locate the heart. Assuming patient has one. For note, the patient only seems to have fur on their head. Removing the need to move it out of the way. He, he edges slightly closer to me and slowly reaches his empty paw out. I guess our, I guess our character is in fact not a bear. I promise I don't want to hurt you. I just want to make sure you were nice and healthy, alright? I wonder if there's ever going to be a furry VN where you play as a bear and, every, and everyone in the setting is twinks instead of the uh, inverse where you're always the tiniest, tiniest man and seemingly hairless and always described as such and everyone else is huge. Then again, every uh, VN writer that I've met is a bottom, so... Whoops. I almost laugh at his attempt to calm me down. It's sweet, but ultimately unnecessary. Although I'm feeling a bit calmer, oddly enough. I mean, I'm still trapped, but at least they sent this guy in to treat me instead of Merrick. That would have been much more... physical, ooh -woo. Physical, physical. Okay, that was a weird place to put an interruption. At this rate, my heart rate might... <laughs> you can't just put the rate next back-to-back to back like that. It might actually be decent for him. After shuffling forwards again, he makes eye contact with me. As if asking me not to jump back or lash out. I stay calm and let him continue with what he has to do. No need to prolong it. It does come to mind, however, that while I have, no I have made physical contact with these canines before, well... One made physical. One made contact with me, at ramming speed. I have not really had a chance to fully study them up close. I'm grateful to find out they aren't all intimidating, or maybe it's just Doc. He's massive, but so gentle. I can feel how warm he is. His breath on my arm, his fur brushing against my chest. It's certainly disarming, if nothing else. After leaning in and putting the cold stethoscope on my chest, he mumbles to himself. Attempting to ascertain the location of the patient's heart and take a reading. He fumbles about for a bit, trying to find it, poking and prodding but never quite getting it right. I'd be embarrassed for him if I wasn't so alien. If it wasn't so alien. I decide instead to just reach up and guide him with a free hand. Grabbing the back of his mighty paw and gently delivering it to my heart. Oh, thank you. It only takes two beats of my heart for him to realize what just happened. He jolts backwards, falling off the bench. I flinch, worried something has happened. Merrick jumps up and rushes to the wall. What the hell, Doc? You okay? I'm coming in. No. No, I I'm fine. Well... What the hell were all the theatrics for, then? I just... realized what the chief was implying. Oh dear. Oh, this is... What are you on about? Merrick! It's following our conversations. Its movements and gestures are not random at all. It understands us. Merrick looks confused, as if he's uncertain that he wants to believe that could be true or not. That's a joke. Right, Doc? He doesn't respond. I'm glad we might actually be making progress here. I was worried I'd have to wait weeks to get anything across. I guess I found... I guess... I guess I got found by some damn smart dogs. Merrick excluded. Oh, <laughs> that's not nice! He could be perfectly intelligent. He's just not interested or something. 
Doc slowly gets up while eyeing me warily, as if I might attack at any second, and musters the courage to ask. Y you can understand us, right? I simply nod. Both Doc and Merrick take a, a second to compose themselves. I guess that was quite the bombshell to casually drop. It's surprising to me too, but so is everything here. I hope it wasn't a mistake letting them know I can understand them. Although with how our earlier conversation was going, it seems the Chief might have figured me out already anyways. Maybe I can ask for a shirt soon, and be let out of jail. Small steps. Doc blinks himself back to reality and sits down next to me. I don't think he knows what to say. Merrick. It should go without saying that everything that, is, that happens here is confidential, correct? What? Yeah, of course, Doc. I'm the one who interviewed half the people who saw this thing. We know the captain doesn't want the word out yet. Captain? Like military rank or like boat captain? Are we on a ship? Guess these questions will have to wait. But it seems there's some higher powers than just the chief. Uh, for posterity, and to make sure that it wasn't just a coincidence, please nod again if you can understand us. I'm a bit confused, but I guess not as confused as them. Yes, I understand you. Doc turns to Merrick, who looks equally as confused. That wasn't a nod. <laughs> he didn't follow directions for shit. Don't look at me. You're the scientist here. This is well beyond my purview. Well, do something. You know what my skill set includes, and this ain't it. These two really like going at each other. These two really like going at each other. As if they were an old married couple on some cheesy sitcom. A sitcom I'd, work, I'd watch back home. A hole suddenly forms in my gut. Home. Where the hell am I? Did I even get a chance to say goodbye? Oh man, not now. I'd really rather not cry in front of these two. Fortunately, the resident walking heart rate monitor seems to have picked up on this. Yeah, that's that's what he's that's all he does. Oh, dear. Uh, don't worry. We're not fighting. Merrick and I are just enjoy getting on each other's tails is all. Ooh, woo. Oh, this is so confusing. Um, I suppose I should introduce myself then. <laughs> My name is Merowyn. Sorry, I just wasn't ready to hear to see something that close to Marrow. Dr. Merowyn Seno. But most people just call me Marrow. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Is this why people recommended this game to me? <laughs> or Doc. Mostly Doc. And that's Merrick. Those are very similar names to give people, actually. Not everyone follows this rule, but my mental rule for if I'm going to name characters in a setting, which I have failed, we failed the shit out of this in uh, Dead Laws, but uh, it's to never give any main characters the same uh, first letter of the name. Just try to just differentiate that and not give them any overlap. Freaking, uh, that's the Elden Ring exhaustion, although some of the Elden Ring names that are the same mean something and some of them don't mean something. Uh, God, but we really screwed up with, uh, um, Conrad, Chance, and Cassidy in Dead Laws. Whoops. <laughs> The fact that I screwed up that bad, where I just kind of made up a name on the on the fl on the fly, or committed to one as the bonus name, but I had the chance to n have my character's name reveal not be the same letter, and I just r screwed up that bad that I added to the pile that already had two names in it. Whoops. And that's Merrick Saris, uh, our head of security. If you haven't picked up on that already, the saint really is trying to live up to his namesake, huh? You thought I was worried about them squabbling and tried to calm me down? Best doctor I've ever had, that's for sure. I take some deep breaths to compose myself. I point to myself. Who are you? What's the default name? Tucker. My immediate re my I guess I guess a lot of people have different reactions to Tucker. 
like, uh... Wasn't the character in Red vs. Blue named Tucker? And then there's, uh, Shao Tucker and so on, but my first reaction is, uh, is, uh, Scrubs. <laughs> Doc seems very excited and tries to repeat my name. I wonder if what I'm saying and what they're saying sounds different? Like, they obviously aren't speaking English, so why do I hear it like they are? And can they even repeat a word I've said in English back to me? Would it have a funny accent, or would it get translated too? Wait. Is it being translated? We've caught up to the the calm situation with the lingua. And the, also the, even the same question about the accents. When we when he found out that uh, when Amicus is not translated, he has like a really thick uh, like Latin accent. Like the language Latin, or anyway. This is too much to wrap my head around on an empty stomach. I look down and grab my stomach, only now realizing how hungry I am. I haven't eaten since last night. Who knows how and who knows bleh. who knows lo how long ago that was? They said how important it was yesterday for them, so it's probably been another 24 hours since we were captured. So this guy hasn't eaten in two days. He's he's just all tuckered out. Ha! <laughs> That's why his name's anyway. I'm so disoriented. I don't even know what time it is. Focus. One issue at a time. And that issue is lunch. I realize that Merowyn has just been watching me. Unfortunately, I think grabbing his one stomach seems to be a universal language. Uh, hey, uh, Merrick? Have we brought any food for our guest? Food? Uh, no. You were the first one in, in there since it woke up. What do you suppose it eats, anyway? Well, I, I guess we'll find out. Mind going and picking something up? A, a variety, if you can. Yeah, yeah, I'd love to, Doc, but I ain't really supposed to leave it unguarded. Let alone leave you locked in there with it. I know you think it's fine and all, but it could still be dangerous. I appreciate your concern, Merrick, but uh, I'll be fine. Anyways, we can't ask anyone else to come and get us anything. So few people even know what's really here. Merrick looks between the two of us. It's slightly egregious because both their names literally start with M-A-R-R, -R, which is a ton of overlap. Imagine if I named... Imagine if I had typed Marrow in. <laughs> like, no, oh no. Not worried per se, just more concerned. Wait, you know what? Dude, 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 let's test that. It's about time to wrap this up anyway for our preview. But you, but you... It's spelled Marrow Y-N. I wonder what, what kind of... Merowyn. Tries to repeat my name? Okay, so they don't react to you typing the same name as themselves. That'd be funny. Yeah. That'd be a, that'd be a, that's a fun easter egg to include if you get the chance. He's just it's fun to be like, hang on a minute. Oh, he's confused. He's just repeating my name back at me. Anyway, I think this is going to be it for now. We're at, we're at an hour and a half. Yeah, this has been Roads Yet Traveled. Uh, go check it out if you want. Link in the description. I forgot to check, but it's probably 18 plus. Uh, I should check. <laughs> Do -do -do -do. Roads Yet Traveled. I usually don't even read the issue pages of these games before I start them because I just like to just go. It's kind of fun to have it revealed what the premise even is. Let's see. Oh, wrong button. No, I don't want to turn... What's Cray browsing? What the fuck did I just press? You think you can change the world? No matter who you are, you can only do so much. You have so little time to make a difference. Like so many times before, you were off to your first day in class. It's not an easy thing, first day jitters, but you can manage. This is your life now, a cycle of moving and new beginnings, always in flux, nothing staying the same, and today is no different. In a flash, everything is gone. With no clear way home, how will you manage? Will your new companions be able to keep you safe? Or will it all be too much? Keep going, though. You have nothing else to lose. <laughs> this game is currently safe for work. This will change in future updates. <laughs> so there's your answer, I guess. 
That function just means that it is NSFW. It just doesn't have the, that stuff content, uh, that, that stuff featured yet, but it's probably ill-advised upon to... It's probably ill-advised to change the current status of the game, but I guess they're technically warning you in advance. Check out these backgrounds. Is that... that looks... I think that is an amicus, actually. With the serial numbers slightly filed off. People love to put their Easter eggs in these backgrounds. Anything else? I wonder. There's the cell. There's two more characters we haven't met yet. Look at his goofy face. There's the guy, Rune, is the name of the guy we accosted. I guess we only learned their real name. Or their, I mean, they only, we only learned their last name. But yeah, this is uh, six updates in, so it's uh, it's going along. Let's see. Build five was in December, and build six is in uh, that would that was that would have been in, in March. So that's a pretty good cadence for updates. One every three months. Let's see how it goes. Thanks for watching like always guys, and I'll see you next time. Feel free to check this out, and there's a link in the description both to this and to the playlist of all the other Let's Tries, because I've done dozens of them now. Just, there are so many furry visual novels, and judging by the little poll I did at the beginning, there's a lot more coming. <laughs>